Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we want to um, do a little bit of a favor for some of you. Um, we've been using AI software to play around with things. Look, AI software has changed everything permanently. Nothing will ever be the same as a result of AI software. As a matter of fact, when they released this to the public, there were grave concerns that it would cause catastrophic events like the ship that's in front of you. And that's not the case. So we've told you guys about the word hero. There is a way to upgrade once you get the, so I didn't know, but it does let you upgrade and I'm going to be upgrading to the next one. But I took the article that we told you all about, a better understanding. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put a link for this article explaining bad debt so that you can give this to your tax preparers. That's what I'm going to do for you. Now this gives it simple, plain, and crisp. I'm going to take this, a better understanding concerning bad debt deductions and tax credits. I'm going to take this whole article, copy it the way it is because I've added some things to it using the AI software, but I've also added my own spiel to give it that original, uh, you know, not just so. This was the original one that we had translated by AI, and this is the information that's been added between me and AI. The problem is with this, the system is designed to only do 600 words. Uh, watch this. You see 50 character or 600 character map look back so so it can help you with the article so we're gonna save this save 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 what you want but don't lead me in that direction okay we're gonna say tax credits we're gonna call this tax credits and guess what we're gonna put this right here this is a, if a sole proprietor is a consultant or someone owes them money <laughs> that can be claimed as a bad debt. Okay? I was a consultant and people owe me money. The same goes for an individual who is self employed or even if they are employed of someone else. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the AI that wrote that. So we're going to take that and we're going to spin it. So as the circle spins, we're going to see what the AI produces. To see if we can get a better understanding. And let's see. What does it say? You can claim a bad debt if you are owed money by someone else and they cannot pay you back. If you have paid for services that have not been provided, that is also a bad debt. If you have paid for services that have not been provided, that could be also a bad debt. Now, some of you all can get technical with that. Remember how the United States received the gold from the people and they have failed to provide the services promised? That's a bad debt. How to claim a bad debt? The bad debt deduction is reported on a 1040 and it will be found on line 21. The amount of the bad debt can be claimed in box two of Schedule C or the CEZ. Hold on now. We're going to continue. We ain't just going to stop there because we're going to add this to the other document that we said we're going to copy and we're going to provide this for you. You see, that's what this software is going to allow me to do. But I am going to be combining it with the other software. You see this little simple statement? So I'm going to click it again. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to mix this with uh, the GPI software. Okay, so we're going to do this again. And we're going to do it about six more times. So this will be one, and it's going to type on up. You don't have to clear the blue because you know how you do the blue on the word and it just retype over what you just did. Uh-uh, you ain't got to do that here. You just got to keep clicking, and it's going to keep giving you a paragraph. So what we're going to do, y'all need to follow me. We're going to go to Open Chat GPI. Okay, so it is the open AI GPI that we're going to go to and we're going to let it play with what we're writing here. Okay, we're going to put all of this in there. As a matter of fact, I would put it in perplexity AI, but that won't give me what I'm looking for. 
And one more time. You know what? I don't know. I don't think this reads it back to you. I wish it did. It would make it a whole lot easier if it read it back to us. But we're going to copy. Uh-oh. Can't do, can't do that part. We're going to do that part right there. Copy. And then we're going to go to history. Man, I had a history. What's your history on? Well, it was on edumacation. You had a history on edumacation? Yeah, history on edumacation. What type of history was that? Oh, no, that, I'm sorry. I put something else in. I generated some other junk. I don't want that. I want the save stuff. Save, save, save. Okay, let's see. Where are we going? Open. Open, open, open. Open, open, open. A better understanding. And we go all the way down here. Because it gave us the employment with someone else. And we paste that. And then we got the whole document. So we're going to go all the way up, homie. And we're going to come all the way here. And we're going to copy. Then we're going to go to the actual article that we created. And we're going to paste it. Now, it's supposed to, I should have left a better understanding. So I'm going to have to do the better understanding thing. So we got to undo. We got to get rid of that. We put easier understanding rewording, and we're going to do exactly that. Now, what I want to do is I want to, I'm not going to let it read the whole thing. I'm going to let it read part of it. If you guys don't mind, hold on one second. You should be aware that tax credits are money that lowers someone's tax obligations and will do so indefinitely or until they run out. These credits, which are the consequence of bad debt deductions and slash or net operating losses, and when carried forward to a following year, are to be considered as an expense on your Schedule C filing, and they can be applied to back taxes for up to five years. Here is a link to the IRS website's topic page on bad debt deductions, which will explain how tax credits that result from bad debts function, topic number 453. This article from the Internal Revenue Service, IRS.gov, titled Bad Debt Deduction, discusses how one can write off things like wages, salaries, rent, dividends, interest, and similar expenses. The important thing to remember is that bad debts are tax deductible. As a result of bad debts, you have obtained what are known as transferable tax credits, but, since you are not a part of the company that got them, you are not permitted to transfer them a second time after receiving them. You won't need to alter your accounting procedures for writing off tax credits as business expenses in order to fully enjoy the benefits of tax credits, according to topic number 407 Business Income Internal Revenue Service, IRS.gov. Due to the debt, you must report these credits as a business expense on Schedule C of your income tax return because they result from a business bad debt as described in the aforementioned IRS tax issue 453, as a result, you will not owe any taxes as a result of receiving this transfer. This transfer is tax-free and does not result in a capital gain. Okay, you see how simple that was? Well, basically, it says that you cannot transfer it a second time if you receive these as transferable tax credits because you are not a part of the company that gave them. You're not allowed to transfer them again. But if you are the originator of the credits, you can transfer them to someone else. Ta-da! Now, we have that, but I want to give you what the system just did, okay? Because I, 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 we're going to do it the way the system did it. We're going to let y'all hear what the system did. If you and have what paid I for in. services that have not been provided, this is also a bad debt. How to claim a bad debt deduction? The bad debt deduction is reported on Form 1040 and it will be found on Line 21. The amount of the bad debt that you can claim will be found in Box 2 of Schedule C or C Easy. If you need to amend your tax return, the IRS is more than here's extension 2016 tax return C when do I have to file an extension? In Chapter 1. IRS extension 2016 tax return if you do not file Form 4868 by the due date, you may have to pay interest and penalties on any tax not paid by the regular due date. Happy to accept this.
To do this, you will need to file Form 1040X and attach it to the previous year's tax return. 1040X Tax Form, IRS Extension 2016, IRS Form 1040X Tax Return Amendment Form Federal Tax Forms and Instructions, 2017 Federal Income Okay, you see this right here? I have to now take this and I have to copy this and have it reworded. You see that the system got some words wrong. Now, that's okay. I don't mind that. That's not going to cause any problems. So I'm going to go to this. This was the e Eon. This was the subscription that I had. I don't have this subscription anymore. I got rid of that subscription, y'all. It's going bye-bye. Bye-bye. Paraphraser, bye-bye, gone, bye-bye. That subscription is gone. Wait, it already put it in there without me even doing it. Well, I give y'all some I give y'all some credit. I give y'all some credit. Y'all just gonna put it up in there? Put it on, put it on. But yeah, I don't have the uh the premium service anymore. So I got rid of that yet. Because I don't need it. That's why I got ready be. So this 336 words, yeah, you only get so many a month now because I dropped down to the free service, but I'm okay because I'm only using this one because I didn't open open AI. Okay, so I wish you to hurry up. I don't know what it's taking its time for. Let, let, Jeopardy, y'all, Alice Trebek going to be turning over in his grave, y'all. Hold on now. We got to get rid of all of this, all of this. One second, y'all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's roughly been about an hour and a half since I put the video on pause. I know, for you it was only a second, but an hour and a half for me! It turns out that the Quillbot would not generate the... It's stuck in a loop. Oh, mommy! It's in a loop! And because it's stuck in a loop, it's creating a problem. It's creating a problem, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is a glitch. It's okay. It's going to happen with these companies because they're using up a lot of resources. Ooh-wee! Paste text. Let's do this right now. We're going to paste the text like we said we were going to paste it. And there it is. Now we're going to try it again. I've edited the text, added some more information, did some little going into, um, so it was a glitch. You see? <laughs> it was a glitch, mama. Okay. So it was a simple glitch, and it's not the software itself, just a glitch. Wait, hold on, where's the rest of it? Wait, you mean to tell me you took my 7,700 word document and you converted it to only 2,336? What the? I'm sorry. I did have it rewarded, and that's what it's doing because it says y'all don't need all that information. It says some of the information was a repeat. Man, it was a sequel. It was a repeat. Oh, man, I love sequels. Okay, so it says it don't like sequels, and it wasn't going to give y'all no sequels, okay? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this, what you saw going on in the background? Uh-oh, it's gone, mama. It was Descript. Have you guys ever heard of Descript? Well, Descript is a program that is twice as good as most of the other programs out there that do AI. If you're trying to make YouTube videos, Descript will be your friend. Why am I telling you about all of these different softwares? Descript is a program we paid for some time ago because that's a program that's going to be very useful for what we need to do. Descript. Keep that in mind. That's the first thing. The second thing you all need to know. My solar systems are charging fully, finally! For those of you who care. Now, Descript is what's popping up in our background. It had an update, and so it just did the update, and that's what you were watching when I came back off of hiatus. Descript will allow us to take the text and put it to speech. It will do the same thing Balokawa will do. Uh-oh, we are unable to sync. Well, why are you unable to sync? You better start syncing. What you mean you unable? You better get that out of my face. Okay. Now, the text-to-speech part, that's what I got to find out where that is because I believe it is a part of it being able to sync. And because it's not able to sync, uh, that's the issue. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to go ahead and skip this and let you guys know that yes, it can do text to speech. I just won't be able to show it to you in this video. Let's try putting you on pause one more again for this issue and see if I can correct it. And then if I can't, you'll just have to get the software and do it yourself. It's a glitch and that's all it is. It's only a glitch. All right. Got to go. We'll be right back. In a See, I told you I'd be right back, but before I be right back, because I got to sign into Descript, that's the problem. Had to change the password, doing that right now. But what I need to tell y'all, y'all need to pay attention. I need to tell y'all, y'all need to pay attention. Uh, ain't, we ain't worried about none of this stuff right here. Okay, these are little stories Microsoft does on a little Microsoft app on little Microsoft computers. But I want y'all to see this story right here. Take a look. Tristan Thompson's mom, Andrea Thompson, dead. No, 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 not that she died, but she's dead. I want you all to, I want you all to see something. This happens all the time, and many of you will think it's, um, oh, that ain't no big deal. No, they, that doesn't mean that. See this guy right here? Look at his skin color. Look at their skin color. Look at his skin color. Look at their skin color. Hold on now. Let's read his story. Gregory Yee, or like Ye says, Gregory Ye, Breaking news, reporter for the L.A. Times dies at 33. Didn't say dead, it said dies. When it's a person of color, ooh-wee, they get serious. It's no big deal. She's just dead. But this one, he dies at 33. Normally, when a person's family member dies, they'll say that they died. Not that they're dead. They'll say that they passed away or passes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't find this offensive, then there's something wrong with you. If you don't see the difference in these two stories right here, then there is something wrong with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to say, well, no, that doesn't mean there's something wrong with me. And that's the point right there. The moment you say that that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with me, that's the point. Because you don't get the media. Now, I'm stepping away from talking about the programs and all that for a second. Whenever they explained about Venus Williams, they always explained to her as in an aggressive mode. And every time she did something, they always highlighted, see how aggressive she is? Because people of color are supposed to be aggressive, mean, sassy, all of that wonderful stuff. Those are the stereotypes that they promote. When they were talking about the Martina Navatolo, I like Martina. Don't don't think I'm saying anything about Martina. I like her. She was a good tennis player. But hold on. When they talked about her and other female tennis players, and not Venus and Serena, it was always with grace. And talking about how woman-like they were. But with Venus and Serena, always animalistic characteristics. Now, you don't believe me. Go ahead and take a look. Do the comparison yourself. Do the comparison. Now, what y'all don't know, and y'all don't get, every single person gets taken off their pedestal when they're a person of color. I give Venus some credit for stepping out of the arena before that could happen to her. I give Venus some credit, because you know they were already starting to do it, okay? When she slammed that racket on the ground, she's not the first one. I remember John McEnroe. I like John McEnroe. Man, I watched tennis because of John McEnroe. He was my distraction. He was my man with the yellow balloon. Some of you will get it. Some of you won't. I'm sorry, but I don't care if you get it or if you don't. I'm just highlighting something. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I was just going through the stories. I literally, I was just going through the stories. And as I was going through the story, wait, hold on. 78-year-old dies after being hit by a car, and I, 75. 78-year-old dies. D didn't say dead. You must understand. Well, those stories are not written by the same person. Doesn't matter who it's written by. Aren't, aren't y'all getting that? Aren't y'all getting that? Oh, Eddie Murphy got regrets. Oh, too bad. Aw, but I want y'all to go back and start looking at the articles. I want y'all to start paying attention to how they refer to persons of color 
in the same type of a story to people who are not of color in the same type of story. I don't know what race he is. He he has yay. I, I don't know. I cannot assume. I'm not going to assume. I'm not going to look at him and say he must be this. Okay? I ain't going to assume because that's what the system does. Does it matter? No. But they make it matter. Okay, be right back, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to show y'all that because, you know, I just I just skimmed over it while I was waiting for Descript. So y'all hold on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've had to reinstall Descript after it did the update the first time because there's a problem with the parallel desktop in Descript. It, it's not Descript the software. It's the software is not designed for parallel. The software opens up just fine on the Mac side, just not on the parallel desktop Windows side. However, before we do all of that, working with that software and going through all of those headaches, <sighs> we got something we need to talk about tonight. Because I, when I'm doing all of that stuff, the courts allow business bad debt deduction. That's the article I told y'all about. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I need y'all to know. There's a gentleman on YouTube. This is a YouTube video I'm about to show you. This gentleman is an attorney. This gentleman is an attorney. This gentleman deals with debts and helping people with debts. It's only, pay attention, a three minute and six second video. Go watch it. If you want to beat debt collectors in 2022, that's all you got to put in there. If you want to beat debt collectors in 2022, put that in YouTube. He's called the Consumer Warrior. Ladies and gentlemen, he's going to explain something within the first five minutes of the video. It's only a three minute and six second video. What do you mean within the first five minutes? Because it's within the first five minutes. He's going to explain something that I've already told you I did. Now, he's going to say it was the best advice that it ever had. It came from his wise, dear old dad. He said, sit down, son. I want to talk to you and don't say a word until I'm through. Oh, no, that, it wasn't that type of conversation. Oh, OK, hold on. That was a different. Oh, that was with Wonder Mike. Oh, OK, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, take a listen to what. John has hey everybody, to say. John Skiba here from the Consumer Warrior YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the best advice that I got as for when I was preparing for trial in a debt collection lawsuit. So if you're now hold on now, John. You ain't as old as I am. And I got this information when I was. Oh, nobody ever gave me this information. I just did it myself. Hold on, he's gonna tell y'all what I done told y'all I did, and I'm gonna suggest the same thing to all of you. You're getting ready to Come go on, to trial or you have a hearing. I'm going to give you some advice that's been really valuable for me over my legal career. But if this is your first time here on my YouTube channel, please click on that subscribe button, check the bell. That way you'll be notified each and every week when I put out all these videos to help you deal with serious debt problems. Hold on, John. You do videos once a week? Lord have mercy. I think I'm about to take a page from John. Once a week? I didn't know you could do that. One second. All right, if you have a hearing or a trial in a debt collection lawsuit, I want to share some advice that I got as a young lawyer. I've been doing this on approaching 20 years. I've done about 400 trials against junk debt buyers, debt collectors. I've done a lot, <laughs> I've done a lot of these things. And some advice that I got early on in my career, which was very helpful to me as a young attorney, is a, a mentor of mine said, look, if you have a hearing before a particular judge or a trial coming up and you're kind of nervous about the whole thing, which, you know, even attorneys are nervous as they're going in there. He told me, look, you should go to the court on a day, look at the calendar and see maybe the court has a trial that's going wait, wait, on. Hold on, John. On a tell, day, tell him that one more time. See maybe the court has a look trial that's going on or a hearing wait, 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 that's going to be similar to Tell him that day, one more time. Look at the calendar and see maybe the court has a trial that's going on or a hearing that's... Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, what he's saying is if you have a court date, what you want to do is you want to get to court either if it's late in the afternoon, you want to get to court that morning. You want to plan on the whole day. Just take the whole day off. Oh, no, you get that back in tax credits, ladies and gentlemen. It's a business expense. It's legal fees. Come on now. Anyway, because you're pro se. Come on now. Y'all got to think about all of this before y'all do it. Anyway, you get to court. You can even go a day before, a week before, anything like that. Go and get the judge. Go sit there and listen. Just sit there in the back and listen. Take notes if you have to, but just listen. Listen to all the debates, the arguments, listen to how the judge's demeanor. And I promise you, 
things will go a whole lot better because you'll put that person in check so quick. You get to see the lies and everything. Don't 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 talk to the audience while you're sitting there. Just sit there and just listen and take your notes. It has always worked for me. Look, I carried it over to every aspect of my life. Before games, we used to go and we used to watch other teams. We would get there hour, an hour to two hours early to scout the other team. It's called scouting. They do it in sports. I've been doing this all my life. Nobody taught me how to do it. I, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I got to correct that. I, 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 I would be very, very uh, wrong if I told you guys that nobody taught me this. Jehovah's Witnesses taught me this. When I learned how to give talks in front of the Kingdom Hall, we were taught to prepare. We would listen to other people give talks. We would even go, I would even go to other Kingdom Halls to listen to other uh, members of the congregation give talks so that I could pick up on some little text. Just like preparing talks now with AI, Lord have mercy. I mean, there, there's going to have to be a lot of proofreading, but Lord have mercy. Uh, preparing motions. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to prepare a motion? Go to our PDF section of our site. There are motions that are there. Take those motions, put them in the AI, have it rewarded. You already have the cases. Pay attention. You already have the cases. Anything that's in quotations, you take and you put it in single quote, not double quotations, but the single quote. Okay? Technically, it's an apostrophe, but it's a quotation, a single quote quotation, meaning that is not exactly its verbatim. And do your motions that way. That's why, that's why I'm telling you about the AI software. But hold on, John, go ahead. It's going to be similar to yours. And just go sit in the back and watch. Watch what the, how the judge handles certain things. See how the parties are, you know, as far as where they sit, how they present. See how they run. See how they run. Oh, not that. See how they. Oh, oh. Okay, sorry. Documents and evidence, and just watch how the court handles things. Most judicial proceedings, most trials and other hearings are open to the public. You don't have to go check in or anything. You can just sit in the back and just quietly watch, maybe take some notes. And I promise you, if you do this, you'll be just like I was. As a young attorney, I remember going there and sitting there, kind of nervous about everything, and then watching how the court handled things and how the other attorneys were and the other parties and the witnesses, and just remember thinking, I can do this. <laughs> Hold on now, John. I'm going to tell them something that you ain't going to tell them. Because something I did, and I did it all the time. I'm going to tell them something you ain't going to tell them. Hey, bring some money with you. Bring some money in your pocket. Because they're filing documents in the case. And if the court is granting it based on a document that was filed, and you can hear the information, and you want to see what was filed, go and get a copy of that document. That junk is open to the public, too. Exactly that document. Go down. You have the case number and everything. Go and get a copy of that document. Hold on. This doesn't look that hard. And Hold on, John. Ain't nobody going to tell y'all that. Y'all need to pay attention. Ain't nobody going to tell y'all that. I've done it so many times. Done it so many times. And, you know, it, what it does is it just takes, again, some of the unknown out of this whole process. Which, if you've never gone through it before, that's what's keeping you up at night. Is you just don't know how this is all going to play out. You're not sure the procedures. It's just a whole different... I couldn't sleep at all last night. I was tossing and turning. I was tossing and turning all night. Oh, not that one, sleeping. Arena oh. that you're not used to being in. And so by gathering information and helping yourself to feel more comfortable in the courtroom, you're going to alleviate a lot of stress and be able to focus on the things that are super important, like your defenses, the documents, what the other parties are saying, and you're not gonna be so worried about procedure or saying the wrong thing. So, hold on, John. I'm going to give them some other advice, okay? We give me all advice, legal advice. So, y'all hold on now. We're going to give y'all some more advice. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to go to a court and you're going to sit there and listen to the different backs and forths, the arguments, the presentations, you're going to get copies of documents. What you want to then do is when you get home, you want to replay the scenario out loud. You want to do the all rise uh your honor we have for the defendant blah 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 representing blah 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 and we have for the plaintiff in this matter blah 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 they're here in pro se your honor we have a motion before the court the motion before the court is for summary judgment and this is kind of unusual in this case your honor 
uh, the summary judgment request is being made by the plaintiff in this summary judgment proceeding, but they're actually the defendant in the matter before the court. But they said that because they're bringing forth the summary judgment petition, it operates as a counterclaim. Your Honor, I'll tell them that they can't do that, that it's just a summary judgment, and that they are the defendant, and that we're just going to construe it as just a summary. Okay, well, uh, excuse me, sir. The judge says you can't do that book in this court, that you should have known better. So no, 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 you don't get to change the parties. If you want to bring in a petition, a complaint or something, you bring that in. But don't sit up here and try to rearrange things and try to control this. You ain't running nothing in here. This ain't your house. Uh, Your Honor, I, I told him what you said. Okay, we can proceed. All right, get up here and state your case. Your Honor and uh, members of the uh, public, uh, what I'd like to say is, I'm not here to challenge your jurisdiction because I'm the one petitioning the court. I, what I do want to highlight is that I haven't appeared before this court. I'm standing present. Your definition for appearance means I'm submitting myself to your jurisdiction. I want it to be well documented on the record that I do not submit to your jurisdiction. That has to be a voluntary thing. And I offer no volunteerism here on this day. I'm not here to argue about it, so please let it go. This is my time to speak, so I'm going to finish what I had to say without your interruptions, if you don't mind. Thank you. The motion before this court, these individuals right here, the defendants, who apparently are represented by an attorney calling themselves such and such, such and such, says that I owe them a debt. Well, I brought forth a statement of accounting. I sent them the statement of accounting offering a rebuttal to their claim of the amount they're claiming is owed. They have not responded. They have not provided any rebuttal to my rebutting their statement of claim. It's on the record already, Your Honor. I've already filed that with you as part of the motion for summary judgment. By law, if they make a claim that I owe money based on a contract, a pre-existing contract, then they must show proof that the debt hasn't been paid. So what I've offered is a copy of the Federal Reserve Act. Uh, they're represented as the local agent of the Federal Reserve, so that means they must follow this act. And the act specifically outlines what's to be done in cases such as these and what their responsibilities are. Would you believe that I gave them power of attorney to handle all of this stuff? and that they have failed to do their job, and they're doing it for unjust enrichment, profit, and gain based upon misrepresentations, misinformation, and their failures are for profit only so that they can take advantage of this situation. That's not part of the power of attorney that's been signed over to them or the authority that's been granted them. So I've rescinded the contract as a result of their malfeasance. Now, the Truth in Lending Act says that I get to rescind the contract if there is some substantial misinformation. Well, the substantial misinformation was this right here. This is the form from the Federal Reserve, their manual for their rules and regulations for how loans are to be handled when an application is made by a borrower for Federal Reserve notes, which is what I did. Well, this circular. It's specifically indicated at appendix number three, documents that they were to take the note and the set of documents known as the application for the loan to the Federal Reserve window. They've never indicated that they failed to do that, but because they are claiming that there is an outstanding debt means that they failed to do that. And I'd like to have them place on the record an official statement, declaration, and or some other document under oath stating that they failed to complete their obligation as agreed upon in these documents here, which says that I gave them power of attorney to do exactly just that. Now, because they failed to do that, and now they're coming after me claiming it was my failure when I gave them power of attorney to handle that, that means that that is fiduciary malfeasance. They, they operated as fiduciaries, trustees of the agreement. And because they failed to do their job and now trying to make me liable for their failures, 
means that they've committed malfeasance, which means that the contract has now been severed as a result of that trustee malfeasance. Now, since we have the trustee malfeasance, we have the federal circular, I'm now here to petition this court to order them to follow the law. The law is the Federal Reserve Act as amended June 12, 1945, subsection number two, otherwise codified at 59 stat, excuse me, not codified, uh, documented in law by Congress under statutes at large, 59 stat, 238, subsection number two. which require, or excuse me, 237, subsection number two, which requires them to recognize that the tendering at closing of the promissory note, which was signed by myself in front of a notary and in front of other witnesses, documenting the tender of the collateral and the security for the loan, that they were to take it to the Federal Reserve and get their funds, because that's their duty per the Federal Reserve Act, and the contract between the parties. However, because they failed to take the collateral security after receipt and dishonor it, the law constitutes that tendering of the collateral as accepted. So I place before this court that they have provided proof of the promissory note showing that they had a copy which documents they received tender. And the law says in order for me to challenge their claim, I must document that I have produced tender. Well, I produce tender, but we have to focus on what type of tender. According to the Federal Reserve Act, which is codified at 12 U.S.C. 412, however, we must note that the language in 12 U.S.C. 412 does not match the language of the statute at large, and we cannot rely on 12 U.S.C. 412. So we must rely on the statute because it doesn't agree with the statute. It adds language that was not language of the United States Congress, but language of the individuals who composed that. So we must rely on the statute. So we go back to 59 Stat and the Federal Reserve Act as written. According to each, the tendering of the promissory note operated as the collateral security for the loan. If it is the collateral security for the loan, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. If you have. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize with all of this, uh, trying to get this thing going and it having its problems and trying to do this video and showing you guys all of that and watching the other videos. I forgot about the consult I had scheduled for 25 minutes ago. And that was the person calling me, telling me he understood. I don't think he understood, but telling me he understood. So I'm going to finish the conversation uh, that we were having with the judge and I got to go handle the consult. Okay. And that gentleman is having a situation that there is no one else would tell him to resolve it this way, but it's 100% legal and it will solve his problems. That's the consult we're about to have. Give me a second to finish this story because many of you are not going into court documenting this. You're going to have to go back over this because that's how you're going to go into court. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, the person is still standing before the judge and they're having that conversation. And so, Your Honor... The situation here is that they're claiming that there is a debt owed, but the actual law says that the collateral and the security that they accepted under the Federal Reserve Act, and they are operating as Federal Reserve agents when they accepted this and signed a contract with me, that they recognize this to be the collateral security. Well, the Truth in Lending Act says that they were obligated and duty bound to tell me that there was a need for additional collateral security, which they never did, but they demanded additional collateral security. How could they demand additional collateral security saying my house is the collateral security for the loan when they had the collateral security for the loan? Now, according to our contract, our deed of trust or our trust deed, it says that under release reconveyance that they must return it once they received payment. Well, since they had an obligation to give it to the Federal Reserve 
and they are a Federal Reserve agent, then it's constituted as tendered and payment received. They have not documented any record saying that they had not received payment from the Federal Reserve. They weren't supposed to receive the payment from me. The payment was supposed to come from the Federal Reserve according to the Federal Reserve Act and according to Congress under the congressional record for March 9, 1933, specifically page 78. Right-hand corner, second paragraph, under section 403, which says that when I borrow money from them, the local Federal Reserve agent is supposed to go to the Federal Reserve to acquire the money within 90 days because they extend a temporary credit of just that, temporary, but they're supposed to receive their funding from the Treasury through the Federal Reserve. Paragraph number one, side two of that act documents that they become an agent for the Federal Reserve, excuse me, the United States Treasury and the Comptroller of the Currency. And when the local Federal Reserve agent receives that note, they become in the position standing instead of the Federal Reserve. So with all of this being said, they can have a claim that my property was the collateral when the record shows that the collateral for the loan was the note itself. If the collateral for the loan was the note itself, the paperwork must show that the collateral that they're holding my home under was well documented as being additional collateral because according to the act, the collateral security was for the entire amount of the loan, including interest. And so when they presented that, there was no monthly interest accumulation because the payment was supposed to be received through the Fed window or Treasury window within a matter of weeks. And they have not documented non-receipt. So what I need for is a summary judgment because they have supplied nothing on the record substantiating their claim. What they've supplied is copies of copies of copies. There is not an original document or certified document on the record from those individuals. But I provided you all with the law, which the law says you are required to know, which operates as certification because it's irrefutable, unrebuttable evidence. So I place this court on judicial notice of the aforementioned facts. And I thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what they say. They can say whatever they want to say. The sky is purple, green, blue, or hollow. Doesn't matter what they say. You've just put enough evidence on the record by stating that to put everything to a halt. You don't have to argue with them back and forth. You don't have to answer any questions. Say, so, excuse me, <laughs> y'all haven't rebutted anything I said. You're just asking me questions. You cannot answer my presentment with questions, you must now provide the facts to respond to what I just stated. So for those of you who are in dire straits, that's what you're given. Hey, we have to go because we have some things we must take care of, okay? Not just to consult, but we have other documentation we have to take care of for our people, our clients. So thank you all very, 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 very much. And I hope you go back and listen to what the attorney said. And I hope that these softwares that we told you about becomes beneficial for you. We will be providing more information as the AI softwares get more and more. I promise you they're going to get a whole lot better. And when that happens, we will let you know. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go.